Have you ever loved a top or piece of clothing so much that you wanted one in every single color? Well, ever since I hand knit this vintage leaf sweater a while ago, I have wanted one ideally for every day of the year, but I think I can settle for maybe one for every season. Autumn is finally fully here and like many of us I'm guessing, it is my absolute favorite time of the year. To celebrate this cozy time, I want to design a vintage sweater that combines the golden warm tones and leaves of autumn with this beautiful 1940s sweater. And I feel like one of the best things to do on a crisp autumn day like today is to cuddle up in my reading chair in a lovely cozy sweater, maybe light a candle, have a hot tea, and play my favorite mobile game, June's Journey. I've played through over 50 scenes in the last two years since I've been playing this game, which is why I'm very excited that they're sponsoring this video about my fall project today, as the game and story continues to captivate me. As you are playing a hidden object mystery game, where you act as a detective to try to solve the mystery, surrounding June's sister and uncovering many of the hidden secrets in the family. Even though I've met a very diverse cast of characters, I think my favorite is still June because of course she wears an aqua cable knit sweater, which I have more than once been tempted to remake for myself. I just think it's so beautiful and cozy looking. I like to play June's Journey in those little moments of downtime that I have where I don't necessarily have the ability to pick up my loom and weave something or my knitting and continue working on a project, but I can immerse myself in this beautiful historic story. It's the perfect game to feel cozy, vintage, antique vibes while having an adventure. <laughs> June's Journey is available to download for free on Android and iOS mobile devices, as well as on the PC through Facebook games by clicking on the link in the description below. And thank you again so much to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video on how I'm going to design and knit this autumn inspired vintage sweater. So let's go straight to the drawing board on how I came up with this idea, yarn choices, colors, designs, all of that. The basis of the sweater design, of course, was my 1940s vintage leaf sweater, which is the best way 82085 sweater design. A bit of a mouthful. And I wanted to redesign it in the autumn colorways and with more of an autumn leaf. I decided to use the maple leaves as an inspiration, and I was thinking of more of like a cream white and some sort of orange tone yarn. And wouldn't you know it, I think I found the perfect yarn for this sweater. It is an independent dyer called Essence of Autumn. She also has a YouTube video where she shows exactly how she dyes her yarns. And of course, this colorway is called Maple Leaf, which I thought was just perfect. It had all the colors I was hoping for for this autumn sweater. Another kind of interesting technical challenge with this redesign is that I wanted to see if I could use my knitting machine for knitting this vintage sweater. Sweater. You might have heard it in my past videos, but I have been having some fatigue issues with my hands and my wrists, and so I'm trying different ways to kind of save my hands to do the knitting that I find most fulfilling and exciting, and to use my knitting machines as much as possible to kind of give my hands and wrists a break. So the first thing that I needed to do to transform this pattern to be a knitting machine pattern is to create a gauge swatch on my knitting machine. With my gauge swatch off of my machine, I could now know exactly how many stitches per inch and rows per inch there are in order to then kind of rewrite the vintage pattern to match my gauge. This yarn is a little bit thicker than what is the recommended yarn for the vintage pattern, so my gauge is a little bit larger, if that makes sense. So I need to, to cast on fewer stitches in order to make my size. Although you'll probably see at the end of this that Maybe there's some differences in how I did my gauge swatch versus my actual knitting because this sweater did end up to be a little tight. Although knitting always stretches, which is, I guess, a nice thing about knitting. You don't have to be quite as exact on your sizing. This sweater is going to be knit in four separate pieces. Two pieces, one each for the front and the back, and two separate sleeves. 
What I'm working on right here is either the back or the front panel and I'm doing the bottom edge. You might notice that currently I'm just knitting in stockinette stitch because the knitting machine that I have, the flatbed knitting machine as it's set up right now, only knits stockinette stitch and does not do any kind of ribbing. It doesn't mean ribbing is impossible, it just means that it takes quite a lot longer. So I will be knitting all of the stitches and rows that I need for my bottom border and then hand manipulating them off of the machine using a latch hook to then create the ribbing. We are now fully done with the ribbing on the front panel. This took me a good two hours. I was originally planning on making this three and a half inches like the pattern states. So let's check if, if we hit three and a half inches with our gauge or not. I think we're just exactly at three inches rather than three and a half inches, which is, it's close, but it's a little off. So I'm hoping that all the other calculations that I did using the gauge that I made will not be quite as off, but that's kind of the nice thing about knit fabric is it stretches. <laughs> so hopefully even if I'm a little off, it'll still stretch a bit. Now comes the somewhat easier part of just knitting all the way to the underarm shaping for the arm and then I'm going to uh, cast off of the knitting machine once we get to the part that starts the color work because I'm going to knit the color work by hand. First let's get to the underarm which means that I'm increasing every eight rows. Then we're going to shape for the underarm which means that I'm going to decrease 10 stitches on each side and decrease a little bit for the arm side. Let's start with the increasing portions. We are done with all of the increases up to the underarm. Hello. It took me, I think about 20 minutes. It could have been maybe about five-ish minutes faster. If I hadn't um, had some issues I had to troubleshoot, you might've seen that. But I mean, anything usually that I do comes with a little bit of problem solving, <laughs> correcting for mistakes I made. So I think that's pretty realistic. So 20 minutes for the entirety of the rest of the stockinette stitch. And now we are going to shape for the underarms up until the color work section. So we are going to decrease 10 stitches on each side and then eight more on each row after that. And then I will cast off onto some scrap yarn because I want to do the color work with hand knitting. Right, Nutella? Nutella's been the best apprentice so far. Do you think you can do the rest for me? No? Darn, okay. I'll just have to do it myself, I guess. So I finished the front panel and I have to do the exact same thing for the back panel and then I have to do two sleeves. So rather than repeat everything for the back panel, I thought I'd move on to the sleeve design so you can see how long that takes. I've already got um, 10 rows and the work cast on to my knitting machine down here. So these 10 rows need to be switched from stockinette to rib stitch with hand manipulation, which should hopefully be less than the two hours it took me for the front piece because it's not as many stitches and it's not as many rows. Let's see how long all of that takes me.
Although I didn't show myself making all four pieces, I promise you I made one back piece, one front piece, and two sleeve pieces. And just before the color work section, I cast off and I am now putting all of my live stitches onto a set of knitting needles. My idea is that I'm going to be knitting the color work chart that I made up for the leaves, the maple leaves this time, one row at a time for each of the pieces simultaneously. So I'll do row one of the color chart for the front and then for the back and then for sleeve one and then for sleeve two before moving on to the second color work chart, which will hopefully be a little bit faster as I'll be getting into a better rhythm with my pattern pieces. In case you're curious on how I came up with a color chart for the maple leaves, I found a free chart online for one leaf and then I transposed it and changed it around to fit the original pattern design better. If you're curious about this chart, I will put it up on my Patreon so you can access it there as well as the translated color chart for the original 1940s knitting pattern because it is not charted at all, it is just written out in words and can be a little confusing. So I charted that one as well as this maple leaf pattern. With all of the hand knit color work done which it seems quick in this video but took me the better part of a week to finish I decided to do the finishing steps of this sweater back on my knitting machine so I had to then put the live stitches from my knitting needles back onto my knitting machine the first scene showed me putting it on in the wrong direction so I had to take everything back off and re put it on in the right direction but all I needed to do was finish up the sleeve heads as you can see me doing on this piece here as well as the neck opening and the back opening of the front and back panels. Now that the contrasting white portion was done on all of my panels, and this part really was very, very quick. I don't know if I mentioned the timing for all of these, but on the back panel, I would say the bottom portion of the ribbing took me about two and a half hours to do. Then the stockinette sections all the way up into the color work took me about 20 minutes to do to 30 minutes. The hand knitting for the color work took like I said, about a week. And then the top portion I would say took me about 15 minutes to do. So that was very, very quick for me to do on all of the panels. And it was very satisfying to see the pattern work out from the calculations that I had done. And this part of the sewing the pieces together does take a little bit longer because I like to do it by hand, but I think that that gives it a very nice authentic vintage finish. The only thing is that I noticed that I accidentally made the back opening a little bit lopsided on my piece, but that's okay. I just finished it with some ribbing to one side, which I think hides that mistake quite well. And all that was left to do was to add some buttons before my final reveal of my autumn sweater. And I would say that my new vintage autumn sweater is a success. I am so happy with how it turned out. I will definitely be wearing this as much as I possibly can. It is such a cute and cozy sweater that really just embodies fall for me. It fits pretty well, although I am glad it does have some stretch because it's just maybe a hint tight. And I'm super happy with how successful my first kind of translation of a hand knit to a machine knit pattern has gone. Thank you again so much for watching and thank you to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. And if you'd like to download June's Journey, please feel free to use the link in the description box below. And I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye.